Hi, second graders. Today's story is from Knowledge 2, Lesson 11, called The Importance of Silk. Our first vocabulary word for today's story is emerge. Repeat after me. Emerge. Emerge means to come out or rise into view. Our next vocabulary word is plunged. Say plunged. Plunged means to have fallen quickly or have been pushed with force. Our last vocabulary word is trade. Say trade. Trade is the process of buying, selling, or exchanging goods. Paper and printing, gunpowder and matches, plows and kites, fireworks and rockets, compasses used to find your way during travel. These are just some of the many things invented by the Chinese. At the time of these inventions, there were no telephones, no computers, no televisions or radios. There were no airplanes, no trains, no buses or cars. So how did people in their parts of the world learn about inventions in faraway China? Well, since the beginning of human history, curious people have looked out across deserts, mountains, and oceans and wondered what lay on the other side of these natural barriers. Explorers risked their lives traveling out from Europe, Asia, and Africa in search of new lands and people. These explorers were not disappointed by what they had found. Their discoveries included new types of clothing, tools, and everyday objects. And as so often happens when people encounter new things, they wanted what the others had had. Thus, trade began between people from different lands. Over time, people from one area of the world started to take the same paths for trade to other areas of the world, traveling the same routes from one place to another over and over again. One of the longest and most important trade routes was a web of roads known as the Silk Roads. These roads joined towns and shipping ports along the Mediterranean Sea and East Africa to towns to the northernmost parts of China. For many hundreds of years, Chinese inventions spread to other continents along the 5,000 miles of the Silk Roads. Do you suppose the Silk Roads were actually made of silk? Take a look at these pictures of silk objects. Silk is very fine, smooth cloth known for being light but strong and is often used to make clothing, scarves, neckties, and decorative wall hangings. In fact, the Chinese use silk to send arrows flying on curved wooden bows for musical instruments and for fishing lines. Silk is so strong that the early Chinese even used it for paper and money. But silk is not a good material for building roads. The name the Silk Roads has nothing to do with the material used to build the roads. Rather, this long network of roads was named for the beautiful silk fabric invented by the Chinese, which for many years was the main item that was traded on these roads. Everyone who saw and touched this amazingly smooth fabric, dyed in many different colors, wanted to own it. The Romans, living in Europe near the Mediterranean Sea, called China the land of silk. People wondered how to make this fabric, which had the ability to keep one warm in the winter but cool in the summer. They were willing to travel long distances over dangerous ground to buy and trade goods in exchange for the extraordinary cloth. For many years, the Chinese kept the production of silk a deep secret. Do you know where silk comes from? These mulberry trees hold the secret in their leaves. Special moths, blind and unable to fly, laid hundreds of tiny eggs, each about the size of a pinhead, on these leaves. When the eggs hatch, caterpillars appear and begin munching on the mulberry leaves day and night. The fattened caterpillars spin a single long thread around themselves, forming a cocoon. In these white poofy balls were allowed to if these white poofy balls were allowed to develop, what do you suppose would emerge? Right, a new moth. But long ago, the Chinese discovered how to stop the development of these caterpillars in order to produce the prized fine silk thread. Chinese women began collecting the eggs of the silkworms. Placing them in special trays, they fed chopped up mulberry leaves to the newly hatched caterpillars and waited for them to spin their cocoons. Once the cocoons were spun, they rested for 9 or 10 days and then were baked. Then the cocoons were plunged into hot water to loosen the thread so that it could be unwound and woven into fine cloth. When something is plunged, it means that it's forced into a liquid or other material. 
The same process is still used in, in China and other silk-producing countries today.